Welcome to our daily devotional series, Relevant Prophet, as we're continuing our look at Jeremiah and what he has to say to God's people and the nations around God's people and what happens in Jeremiah's life. And we're asking ourselves that question, how is this relevant to us? What is it that we can learn as we spend time in Jeremiah? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50, we're going to begin at verse 21. God has now turned his attention, not just the nations around Israel, but to Babylon. The Babylon that he has used in order to punish these nations, now he turns his attention to them for what they have done and what they continue to do and, and what they thought about what they did. So let's pick up with verse 21 and we'll read through verse 28. Against the land of Marathaim, go up against it, against the inhabitants of Picard. Put them to the sword, and devote them to destruction, declares Yahweh. And do according to all that I have commanded you. The noise of battle is in the land, and great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth has been cut in pieces and broken. How Babylon has become an object of horror among the nations. I set a snare for you, and you were also caught, O Babylon. But you yourself did not know it. You have been found and also seized. Because you have engaged in conflict with the Lord, with Yahweh. Yahweh has opened his armory. He has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For it is the work of the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, in the land of the Chaldeans. Come to her from the farthest border, open up her barns, pile her up like heaps, and devote her to destruction. Let nothing of her remain. Put all her young bulls to the sword. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe be upon them, for their day has come, the time of their punishment. There is a sound of those who flee and escape from the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of Yahweh our God, vengeance for his temple. Yes, God had used Babylon to punish Israel, to punish Judah. But Babylon had taken it too far. Babylon had become prideful about her accomplishments. Babylon had fought not just against Judah, but they began fighting against God. God says, you've picked the wrong battle. You don't fight against me. Here's my thought. Here's the relevancy for you and for me. When we open up God's word and we read what is right and what is wrong, what is pleasing to him and what is displeasing to him, And we do what is displeasing to him, and we don't aim to please him. We are fighting against God. We are saying, God, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. And there is danger in fighting against God. And so my plea for you and my plea for me is that we search scripture. We search out what the God who loves us and the God who created us and the God who wants the best for us. We search out what this loving, caring God says. And we in turn live searching his will, his word, to know and to do what pleases him. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your blessings, for your care, for your compassion. Father, we thank you that you have given us your word that tells us how we can be pleasing to you. Father, help us not fight against you, but to fight with you, to fight for you, and to live a life in your glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to these. I look forward to the next series we'll be doing on the book of Matthew. And I think I'm going to call it the King of Kings. From Matthew's account of the gospel, Matthew writes about Jesus being the king. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to being with you. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.